Hey guys, welcome back to another batch cooking video. Today I am going to get another couple of soups happening. We are going to make a cauliflower soup and a sweet potato soup. These recipes are really simple, very versatile. And the great thing is that you can often mix and match these recipes together which means that you can come up with new combinations. So by keeping these soup recipes in particular really, really simple, we can mix them together and get a different flavor. We can use them as a base for stews and casseroles and curries and things like that. Or we can just have them as a soup either for lunch or dinner. So I'm going to jump in and get started with the cauliflower soup. We picked up the cauliflowers from Aldi this week for just under $3 each. So this also means that we're making meals that are actually really cheap, pretty frugal and filling our tummies for not very many dollars. The sweet potatoes were $1.99 a kilo at Aldi. And one of the things that I like to look for is in season vegetables that I can make soups from. And that's when I will pick them up in bulk, make soups, get them into the freezer when they are cheap and economical. Uh, so at the moment, cauliflowers, sweet potato are a good buy. Other times it's gonna be other vegetables. It might be pumpkins or white potatoes or whatever else. But this week, that's what was on special at Aldi. So that's what we've grabbed. We're gonna prep them, turn them into soups and get them into the freezer. All right, let's get started. These are our two massive cauliflowers that we picked up from Aldi. I am going to prep both of them today. I'm going to use one whole cauliflower head in the soup plus a few white potatoes and I'm prepping the other one I'm going to cut it up cut it into uh, florets and have that ready to be used in our roast dinner tonight so two birds with one stone while I'm here cutting up these cauliflowers I'm just going to get it all done this is what's going to go into our cauliflower soup we've got four large potatoes one really large cauliflower head and I'm going to chuck in a couple of stock cubes. How many stock cubes will depend on how much water we need to cover all of this. So I'm going to dice everything up, get it into the pot, cover it with water and then work out how many of the chicken stock cubes we're going to put in there. And I'm going to guess it's going to be probably three or four, but we're going to play it by ear. And that, at this point, is everything that's going to go into this cauliflower soup. One of the things that I really like to do with the soups is to leave them fairly basic, fairly plain, and then when we go to reheat them or eat them, that is when we're going to add the flavor and change it up a little bit. But for now, we're keeping this soup really, really simple. So, time to get cutting. Next up is the sweet potato soup and this one's got about one and a half kilos of sweet potato. They are pretty big those sweet potatoes. About 200 grams of carrots uh, just because that's what I had left in the bag um, to be used up. So a little half a carrot there. Obviously we've been having carrots as snacks this week so we've ended up with a little half carrot. Uh, so I'm going to use up everything that I've got somewhere I don't know, around two, three medium sized carrots is good. I normally don't measure and weigh things, so every time I make it, it's slightly different. Uh, and the other thing I'm gonna chuck in is some red lentils, which is going to give this a little bit more protein. Um, and I'm going to throw in about half a cup of uh, red lentils to this uh, sweet potato soup. And again, I'm going to do a similar sort of thing with the stock. I'm going to cover this all with water and then work out how many stock cubes I need to add. And it's probably going to be about three as well. The big pot is full. I haven't completely covered it with water. What I'm going to do is get this cooking first and see how much all of that cauliflower compacts. If I need to add a little bit more water, I will but I don't want to add too much water 
and make the soup too runny to begin with. So it's just coming to the very bottom of those cauliflower florets that you can see on top. I'm going to pop in three stock cubes, bring this to the boil, let it cook for a little bit. Then I'm gonna come back and check it and see how our consistency is looking. And if I need to add a little bit more water, I will add a little bit more water then. We've got the sweet potato, the carrot, and the red lentils in the pot. It's time to cover this with water. And I'm going to throw in a couple of stock cubes into this one as well. And also bring this to the boil. And I'm gonna simmer both of these soups for about 30 minutes or until all of those vegetables are nice and tender. And then we can blend it with the stick blender. Now that that cauliflower pot has actually come to the boil and everything started to settle, there is actually enough water in that pot. So I'm not going to add any more. Now I'm just going to let that simmer and cook. The potatoes are on the bottom. The cauliflower is on the top and I think we're going to see that settle a little bit more as that cauliflower cooks as well. So let's put the lid back on this one and let it do its thing. So the other thing that I've done while I was in the kitchen is I have chopped up the other cauliflower that we bought. That's going to be used in tonight's dinner. I'm going to do a cauliflower and broccoli cheese bake in the oven to go with our family roast. So I've prepped those veggies already. They're in some microwave containers so that I can quickly steam them. And then tonight I'm half prepped. I'm just gonna make the cheese sauce to go over the top of them and pop them in the oven. But while I was there, had the knife out the chopping board, already chopped up one cauliflower, might as well go ahead, chop up that other one. So I've got a bit of a jump start on tonight's dinner. The sweet potato soup has ended up making seven serves. It is quite thick. If I'd added a little bit more water, I think it would have actually made eight. But this time around, we've got a thick sweet potato soup with seven serves. And this all came together for less than $5. And the great thing is that because it's still quite a simple soup, I can either just serve this the way that it is and we'll get seven serves. Or I can use this and mix it, say, with the cauliflower soup that we've made. It'll make a different type of soup. We'll have a sweet potato and cauliflower soup. Or I can use one of these as the basis for a stew or a casserole or even a curry with that delicious sweet potato flavor in it. So I'm going to get the lids on these and get these in the fridge. And our cauliflower has actually made 12 serves. So I have 10 here in individual serves ready to go into the freezer. So that will do two complete full meals for us. Plus in this microwave container, I have a double serve. So that can be lunch for Shan and I one day next week. We'll Pick a day when we're both going to have it and we'll heat up this double serve because I ran out of <laughs> containers to put everything in. So for less than $5 again for this big batch, we've got 12 serves of cauliflower soup and keeping the flavors simple. Again, like I've already said a couple of times, it's great because I can mix this with other things. So we already have the sweet potato soup um, we also have pumpkin soup from last week. We could mix and match uh, and make a different flavor combination. But this is really nice, very simple flavors. When we're ready to serve this and we just wanna have a cauliflower soup, I will add a little bit of sour cream to make it a little bit creamier. 
and we'll probably add our favorite toppings which is some fried off crunchy bacon and some chives as well and it's a really simple but filling meal and we'll either have this for dinner or for lunches and we'll serve it with a little bit of crusty bread or some toast and there you have it a really cheap easy meal to make and it makes so much we always have leftovers of these soups and one more little tip if you are doing big batches don't forget to actually write on the containers what you have made because this uh, looks very similar to potato soup the sweet potato soup looks very similar to pumpkin soup um, and if you don't mark things in the freezer which I am 100% guilty of doing it's really hard to tell them apart when they're frozen. So I am going to go ahead and mark all of these containers with what is in them. And I'm going to get them into the fridge to cool. And after they've cooled for a couple of hours, I'm going to transfer them across to the freezer.